What makes a motion picture stand alone for decades? Why is it acclaimed as one of the all-time great films? And why has there been no equal in honors presented to this Academy Award-winning movie? Perhaps the answer lies in the efforts of the men who created Lawrence of Arabia, the motion picture that made great international stars out of Peter O'Toole and Omar Sharif. I went out exactly the same age he was. In fact, I was, I think, 12 days older. And I lived with the Bedouin for three months before the film started. Peter O'Toole is talking about the legendary T.E. Lawrence, whose remarkable exploits were accomplished in this Arabian desert, the remote location chosen by producer Sam Spiegel to film his epic story. It was a huge task, just to have the necessities of life flown in, because the nearest town was 150 miles away, and the movie company had a five-month shooting schedule. I assumed it would be for five months, which is what I understood it would be, and it turned out to be two years and three months. It was a site unmarked on any map until discovered by director David Lean and art director John Box. These Academy Award winning movie makers had to recreate an era out of a desolation that knew only these Bedouins and their camels. All that's ever been here have been nomads and the sounds that hang in the air of Lawrence of Arabia and his Arab legions as they battled the Turks during the First World War. Shooting color film in the blazing desert required the greatest of planning and patience. The wind and sand were a constant danger to the sensitive color lenses of these massive 70 millimeter Panavision cameras. During the filming, Peter O'Toole developed a very close relationship with director David Lean. Lean also guided Bridge on the River Kwai and Dr. Zhivago to Academy Awards. His technique is unmatched when it comes to blending vast scenics with close-up dramatic action. In Lawrence of Arabia, his genius led Peter O'Toole to worldwide stardom. Now I find acting very difficult. I'm sure David finds directing very difficult. And uh, at 130 in the shade at the top of a sand dune, sitting on a camel covered in vermin doesn't make it any easier. The men behind the cameras were faced with another kind of problem. They had to make all their equipment mobile to cope with the demands of the rough and uneven terrain. They had to film action sequences with Alec Guinness and Anthony Quinn, who also star in Lawrence of Arabia with Peter O'Toole and Omar Sharif. I think perhaps the first time ever in any professional experience I've had with um, people of, of this kind of stature, I got more help, more encouragement from them than I ever dreamed possible. Peter O'Toole and Omar Sharif were both nominated for Oscars after their performances in Lawrence of Arabia. But behind their acting on the screen was a lot of hard work. And after each scene, the desert had to be smoothed down like the infield at a baseball game. Some of the filming was done at night when the temperature dropped from 130 degrees, particularly the scenes that were shot in the huge Arabian tents where T.E. Lawrence convinced the many isolated Arab tribes to unite in the common effort against the Turkish army. The desert often played visual tricks during the heat of day, but the result added fantastic images to the movie. During the filming of one sequence, these camels seemed to be walking on air above the sand. This is a mirage. Two years and three months of work drew to a close as the Columbia Pictures movie company completed its activity. Within days, all signs of this tremendous action was covered up by the hostile wind and sand. But the incredible saga of Lawrence of Arabia has been forever immortalized on film. This week saw the American premiere of Lawrence of Arabia, the story of the daring British officer and author who led an army of Arab irregulars against Germany's Turkish ally during World War I. Here, producer Sam Spiegel and director David Lean arrived for the showing, the proceeds of which went to charity. Lawrence is played by Peter O'Toole in his first major role. 
The dominating character he portrays has come down the century as one of its most enigmatic figures. Co-starring is Alec Guinness, who won an Academy Award for his lead in the last Spiegelin production, Bridge on the River Kwai. Anthony Quinn plays the powerful Arab leader Oda in the Columbia picture. Celebrities attending saw spectacular scenes shot in the Jordanian and Moroccan desert. The screenplay is the work of Robert Boltz, the playwright author of A Man for All Seasons. T.E. Lawrence comes alive for another generation. Then I will execute the law. I have no tribe. On December 10th, 1962, Lawrence of Arabia premiered in London. Queen Elizabeth II attended and congratulated actor Peter O'Toole and director David Lean on their magnificent achievement. Lawrence was an instant sensation. Its limited showing sold out so far in advance that reservations were made by mail. The initial poster showed a mysterious shadowy face, as though promising to unmask the complex character of one of England's most legendary figures. The beautiful souvenir book also promised deep psychological drama with its brooding close-ups, tinted backgrounds, and stunning panoramas. The publicity photos, on the other hand, tried to appeal to all tastes, running the gamut from drama to pageantry to action. But theater owners were unhappy with the film's epic length. At three hours and 42 minutes, Lawrence required an intermission, which allowed only two showings per day. Bowing to pressure, director David Lean cut 12 minutes, and producer Sam Spiegel cut eight more. In early 1963, the campaign for the shorter movie portrayed it as an action film with illustrations like those for a Western or a war movie. The dark brooding face was moved to the side or replaced by portraits of the stars. That spring, Lawrence of Arabia won an astounding seven Oscars, including Best Picture. Seven years later, in 1970, Columbia re-released the film after cutting 15 minutes more, reducing the runtime to just over three hours. The new campaign portrayed the film as a classic by showing Lawrence in flowing white robes like those in Greek sculpture. His figure also became ethereal and larger than life, floating above the action. This revolutionary figure easily translated to foreign markets, reminding the French of Joan of Arc and the Japanese of Samurai. A series of lobby posters made in Italy in 1971 superimposed huge images of Peter O'Toole and other stars over action backgrounds, making them giants among mere mortals. The hand-tinted colors, wildly different from the film, created an even more fantastic look. In 1989, David Lean finally made a polished director's cut, which tight deadlines in 1962 had made impossible. Deleted scenes were restored, and several actors came back to re-record long lost lines. The 1989 campaign returned to Lawrence of Arabia's roots, and this time, rather than in shadows, it showed Lawrence brightly lit, almost saintly, the mythic lord of the desert atop a solitary dune at dawn. From its premiere in 1962 to today, Lawrence of Arabia has been marketed in many different ways. Character, adventure, revolution, and restored genius. For fans of David Lean's Lawrence of Arabia, it has proven to be all of these and much, much more.